Jesus promised that he wouldn't leave you alone to live the Christian life. He promised to send a personal and able helper. I am telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. That's John 14, 25 and 26. If you're thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, type, I love you, Holy Spirit, in the comment section. Perhaps you've heard of him. Maybe in one way or another, you've seen him at work. And it's quite possible that you even felt him, even if you didn't realize that it was he. But whether you're familiar or unfamiliar with him, it's my passion to tell you more about the precious Holy Spirit. You see, you received the Holy Spirit the very moment you were born again. You were born again of the Spirit. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. That's John 3, 5 to 8. Everyone who belongs to Christ has the Holy Spirit. He's our distinguishing mark. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the Spirit if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 9. You didn't receive a portion of the Holy Spirit, a baby Holy Spirit, or the new convert Holy Spirit. No, when you believed on Jesus, the Holy Spirit came to dwell within you in the fullness of His presence and power. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. That's Romans 8.11. The Holy Spirit is not a badge of honor for only the spiritually elite, if ever there was such a group. He's not a reward for the super spiritual. He's your only hope of ever being spiritual. In fact, not only could you not be spiritual without the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't even desire to be spiritual without the Holy Spirit. He gives you not just the how-to, but also the want-to. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. That's Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. So when I talk of surrendering to the Holy Spirit or becoming a friend of the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about receiving him, but acknowledging and obeying him. In so doing, it's not that you suddenly get the Holy Spirit, but rather that you begin to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. It's not a matter of you getting more of the Holy Spirit, but of the Holy Spirit getting more of you. Now, there was a time when I didn't know that the Holy Spirit could be known as a friend. I had long imagined him to be like a mist in the air or like a cloud that hovered above a church service. He's more than a force or a feeling. He can be known as a friend. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Yes, the elating reality is that his friendship is for all who bow to Jesus as Lord. The Spirit's presence abides wherever there's a love for Christ and he cultivates that love to greater measures. If the name of Jesus is on your mouth, if a love for Christ rests in your heart, then the Spirit's presence belongs on your life. For no single person is more passionate about Jesus than the Holy Spirit. He'll reveal Christ to you with such clarity that the reality of the Savior will grow with vivid intensity. He makes Jesus more real to you and draws you closer to God than you ever imagined possible. Your friendship with Him will give you everything that you need to be, do, and have all that God desires. He'll help you to pray more powerfully, worship more sincerely, love more truly, serve more effectively, understand Scripture more deeply, and live your life more spiritually. Whatever your issue, question, concern, or struggle, He will personally see to it that you are guided in the right direction. But the Holy Spirit isn't looking to check into a hotel. He's looking to buy a house. He's not looking for a visit, 
He's looking for a residence. You are his dwelling place. He's attentive and relevant to your every moment. You can go to him when you're sad, when you're happy, when you're frustrated, when you're mad. He can be the first to greet you in the morning and the one who hears your final thoughts of the day. Talk to him about your desires and your dreams, your fears and your failures. Speak with him about the people in your life, from old friends to new acquaintances. Let him guide your conversations, your plans, and your decisions. And as it goes with conversation, he is disturbed by neither the trivial nor the significant. Though magnificent, he's approachable. In whatever you involve him, you honor him, and you welcome his voice, his perfect instruction. And through friendship with the Holy Spirit, you'll know God in greater measures. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. The Holy Spirit has divine insight to the mind of God, and he shares those secrets with you. The scripture elaborates on this profound truth. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. It's 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 12. Your spirit knows you best, and God's spirit knows him best. The spirit of God communicates with your spirit. That's how we come to discover divine depths. So it is by the spirit that we come to know God. The Holy Spirit is the keeper and the giver of God's secrets. Only those who are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit can be entrusted with this precious insight. For secrets are not shouted, they're whispered. And to hear a whisper, one must be near. So, if you're near to the Spirit, a friend of the Holy Spirit, you'll come to know and appreciate God more intimately than ever before. With confidence, you will hear His voice. With love, you will live in His holiness. With power, you will walk in His miraculous ability. The Holy Spirit lives within you. He's God's indwelling presence. God the Father sits upon the throne. Jesus is seated at his right hand, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you. What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? That's 1 Corinthians six nineteen. When you walk in the awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit upon your life, every room is a prayer room. Friends of the Holy Spirit don't follow signs. Signs follow them. They don't have to chase an atmosphere because they become an atmosphere. As a friend of the Holy Spirit, you become a carrier of his glory. And wherever you carry that glory, the dominion of heaven is established. Are you a friend of the Holy Spirit? If this message blessed you, make sure to leave a like to help spread the message. And let's stay connected. Subscribe for more messages on the Holy Spirit prayer and spiritual warfare. And remember, the production of our content is made possible by generous believers like you. Help our ministry fulfill its mission to spread the gospel all around the world through events and media. Sign up to become a monthly partner right now by going to davidhernandezministries.com partner. And remember, nothing is impossible with God.